Hello, this is Father David. Here with day 20, we are at the halfway point in our Lenten journey. Uh, here in Great Lent 2023, the uh, meditation for today comes from Father Alexander Schmemann's uh, book, Great Lent. I think a must read for anyone who uh, Orthodox or not, but especially for Orthodox who want to understand what it is that we are doing in Great Lent. And he speaks today of Memorial Saturdays. Now in the Orthodox Church, uh, at various times or on various Saturdays, they are designated as times when uh, the faithful can gather to celebrate the liturgy of St. John Chrysostom on these Saturdays, particularly of Great Lent, but uh, also some Saturdays prior to Great Lent, that uh, we are uh, remembering especially those who have fallen asleep in the Lord. And so he talks about this, these Saturdays. Uh, of course, the word Saturday is off of the uh, word for Sabbath, the Sabbath rest within the Jewish uh, law and Christians, by the way, oftentimes, sometimes they think that Sunday is the Christian day of rest, but it's not true that within our tradition, Saturday is still the day of rest. Sunday is the Lord's day. And uh, it's as uh, uh, St. Vladimir's uh, professor, Veselin Kesich, uh, of blessed memory, uh, would call the first day of the kingdom. You know, the, the, the eighth day of the week, the movement into the next life, the reality of uh, the resurrected life that's beyond the seven days of simple biological life and chronological time. At any rate, Father Alexander says this about these memorial Sabbaths. Sabbath... The day of creation, the day of the goodness of this world, because God said everything was good as he created it. This Sabbath became in Christ the day of expectation, the day before the Lord's day. Saturday is a day of feast and a day of death. It's a feast because it is in this world and in its time that Christ overcame death and inaugurated his kingdom. Because his incarnation, death and resurrection are the fulfillment of creation in which God rejoiced at the beginning. It's a day of death because in Christ's death, the world died. And in its salvation, fulfillment, and transfiguration are beyond the grave in the age to come. During Lent, this meaning of Saturdays acquires a special intensity. For the purpose of Lent is precisely to recover the Christian meaning of time as preparation and pilgrimage and of the status of the Christian as alien and exile in this world. These Saturdays refer to the Lenten effort to the future fulfillment and thus give Lent its special rhythm. On one hand, Saturday in Lent is a Eucharistic day marked by the celebration of the Divine Liturgy of St. John Chrysostom, and Eucharist always means a feast. The particular character of that feast, however, is that it refers to Lent itself as journey patience, and effort, and thus becomes a stopover whose purpose is to make us reflect on the ultimate goal of that journey. This is a, a good example of what Father Alexander and others would often talk about, you know, the now and the not yet. That in a sense, we Christians are here, and now, in this world, uh, and yet at the same time, and these liturgies and prayer for the dead remind us that there is a not yet, an existence beyond this 
spatial, temporal life, where even now, as it says in uh, John's Gospel, chapter 5, which we read at funerals, the time is coming and now is when those who are in the grave will hear his voice. Because on the one hand, we see the dead lowered down into graves, and it's a traumatic experience because we see the one we love but see no longer, we watch as they are placed in a grave. And that, and we go and we visit in the cemetery and we speak at the gravestone. We have graves blessed at every Pascha. But we go because that's where the remains of our loved ones lie. And yet, at the same time, they are alive in Christ. They are brought by their guardian angel into the presence of Christ. And they are beyond mere space and time. And so this is a, a, a foretaste of what is to come at the day of resurrection. And in the mystery of Orthodox worship, we are united to that timeless, spaceless existence. And our prayers are wedded to the souls of those departed this life, to, the re to their reality of participating, even without their bodies, in the life in Christ, even as they wait for that day of the kingdom when Christ will split the sky, raise all the dead, reunite their souls with their bodies, all will be judged and time will be no more and the final judgment will occur. But we have this opportunity now as we come into a day of Sabbath rest, a day where we can uh, participate in, of course, that Holy Saturday, which is coming up the day before Pascha, it says this is the Sabbath of Sabbaths, the time when the Lord rested from his work on the cross in Holy Friday, where the Lord is literally resting in the tomb. And we see him there. We are called not only to come to the end of this world's work and this world's involvement, we are to participate in it. We make it all the way to the Sabbath and we can rest, but we also understand that something more is coming. So we participate in this world, we partake of its Sabbath rest, but we understand that there is an eighth day that is not yet and yet, when we partake of the Holy Eucharist, the body and blood of Christ, the banquet feast of the marriage supper of the Lamb, we have a foretaste of it in that moment, of that life that is beyond this life, that love that is stronger than death, that strength and that reality that will carry us beyond this age into the unfading age to come. So let us continue to celebrate that connection, that reality, that union of this life and the next, especially on these Memorial Saturdays as we prepare ourselves to celebrate that Feast of Feasts, which gives us that uh, unquestionable reality and the joy of an empty tomb that leads us to life everlasting. So Lord God bless you, Lord willing, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.